Using a binary system of weighting, you can cut the upper die into lengths that allow box and pan work. This video explains how to do this so 1 inch to 31 inch setups can be achieved. Working with 5 die lengths of 1 inch, 2 inches, 4 inches, 8 inches, and 16 inches, you can construct any lengths from 1 inch to 31 inch directly. This is handy for doing box and pan bending. There is a link in the description that takes you to all the press break videos, drawings, spreadsheets, and tables. Look for files named Die Cuts that expand on content presented in this video. The original die set I used in the press break videos came as a 49 inch length. The lower die remains at that length. If you will be doing box and pan bending like that shown, you'll need lengths to match the interior of your bend space. The idea is to not limit the type of bends you can make, but to make the upper die more flexible so it can fit inside a variety of smaller spaces while still retaining the ability to make long bends. Cutting the upper die into strategic lengths and truing up the ends will accomplish this. You can then build custom lengths as required. Let's take a look. If you find yourself in a box and pan bending situation and you need to set up your dies to fit within a specified width, you can cut them one inch, two inch, four inch, eight inch, and 16 inch which will allow you to set up lengths anywhere from 1 inch to 31 inches. For example, here's 1 inch plus 2, there's 3 inch, 3 and a quarter, 3 and a half, or just 2 inches. If you need 4 inches, you can use your 4 inch die directly. 5 inches, 5 and a quarter, 5 and a half, if you need six, then you're just going to go ahead with four and two like this. Six, six and a half, somewhere around in there. If you need seven inches, you can just add your one inch piece in there. That gives you seven, seven and a quarter, seven and a half. If you need eight inches, you can go for your eight inch die and nine inches and so forth. So that's kind of how this works. And if you need to go for the full length, you can go ahead and add these dies like this. So this will give you 15 inches here, one inch plus two inch plus four inch plus eight inch. And then you can go ahead and slide this over. Your 16 inch piece can go in like this. And then that right there can give you your full 31 inches. So you can play around with this and set it up. It's pretty flexible. It's very important that you machine off these edge because the bandsaw cuts are probably gonna be a little sloppy. So you can put these in a bridge port, square them up and you know mill them off so they're, they're perfectly square and perfectly true. That so that when they go in, the machine they fit nicely so you don't have any registration problems so that's a little a little tip on how you can make your dies a little bit more flexible as mentioned I cut five die lengths from my 49 inch upper die as shown I also have a leftover piece just over 17 inches which I left as a drop I cleaned up the edges on that piece so I can reconstruct a 48 inch upper die for long bends the die shown are 1045 medium carbon steel and a tough cut. Plan on bandsaw cuts taking longer than with low carbon steel like 1018. The most important thing is to leave yourself a machining allowance so that finished lengths are as shown. How much of an allowance depends on how accurate the bandsaw cuts are. I was able to get away with an extra 60 thousandths on each end. Set your milling machine vise square, lock the die in, and machine off metal in small amounts until you get a perfect end. This needs to be square in two directions, length and width. Properly squared off die ends will allow die sections to meet perfectly in the upper ramp. Fractional distances like four and a quarter can be achieved by spacing die sections out. Small amounts of airspace have minimal impacts on the bend line. You can reverse the part and hit the bend again. 
This places air spaces in different positions along the bend line. 